Hey guys, welcome to game seven. And this is going to be, typically this classic rivalry was between one of the best Terran in North America in Gypsy and one of the best Zerg in North America in Jayun. However, Jayun has shifted his play recently to Protoss. I'm not sure if he's done the official switch or not. He's mostly when he talks about it, he's like, I'm flirting with Protoss. It's kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like sexual experimentation. I'm flirting with, flir flirting with the idea of Protoss. Upper right-hand corner, we have him as the blue Protoss, upper left-hand corner. He's joined the weaker right... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know a lot of people have uh, comments, but he's he's got a really strong Protoss play. I think initially he was doing it to kind of get inside his opponent's head and kind of get an idea of what's going on, but he's a fantastic Protoss player and has already, Jayun being Jayun, accelerated to the top of North America as far as Protoss players. In fact, I think there's actually arguments that he's currently the best Protoss player in North America. I'd like to, I'm curious with counter arguments in that space. Anyway, this is going to be on Polypoid. He's starting in the upper right hand corner. He's going up against Gypsy, who is the Teal Terran upper left. And this is game seven. I haven't honestly been fully keeping score because mostly I've just been enjoying the games themselves. And I'm wondering if these were all played at once. I'm trying to, I think as far as the groupings of the team, I don't even remember who took like the overall set one or set two. I think mostly the, and I think, Mostly the goal of this was less to keep score and less to have like, a, I don't even know if there's money on the line. Maybe if there's money on the line, it would make more of a difference. Instead, I think this just makes for awesome matches. Barracks on the front ground for Gypsy. Looks like we are going to see a gate opener and a simulator already dropping down for Gypsy, or sorry, for Jayun. So I think Jayun is going to opt to go ahead and skip that initial zealot and go for more of a earlier Dragoon play. We'll see if he goes for Dragoon pressure, or if he's going to go for more macro oriented style. I'm not sure. I just know that I love watching these guys. These two guys elevate each other's play. They're both very intelligent players. They both, actually I was talking about this with Gypsy the other day on his stream, by the way, check his stream out at Gypsy93. I'm oftentimes there uh, chatting StarCraft with him. Also check out Jayun's stream, Jayun on Twitch TV. Both these guys just have kind of that X factor. I don't know what to call it. It's kind of that thing where it's it goes beyond meta. It goes to the point where they just, Part of it is, is it's, I don't know, raw EPM. It, there's there's something where they just can get into the flow state. That's actually what I want to call, call it. There's certain players that can get into the flow state in this game and just kind of sit back and kind of have that, uh, I don't know what to call it. It's like a mental enlightened whatever sort of thing in the midst. It's like the Zen thing of StarCraft in competitive play. And I think when these guys play against one another, they hit it more often than not, which is why their matches are so entertaining. Opposite side of the field, we do have a command center after barracks, so it looks like Rax into command center. First Dragoon is being fielded. It looks like we have that Cybernetics Core upgrade. Uh, no scout yet from Jayun, which is actually, I want to point out kind of an interesting aspect here. So he has no idea what Gypsy's up to, which honestly, I'm wondering if that's indicative that Jayun already has kind of a pre-planned build. I do like that this SCV was kind of, is hidden out to the corner. So Jayun... Is he just going to scout with the Dragoon? Hiding this Dragoon to that natural expansion, it looks like he's going to go ahead and grab his natural and now starting to move out with the Dragoon. I do like this SCV being hidden to go ahead and get it. Because basically getting the scouting information, whether you're seeing additional gateways, whether you're seeing a natural expansion build, Dragoon moving to the south, it looks like that SCV headed up to this left. It's going to find a bunker with two Marines in it. And actually, I like that Gypsy going a little bit lighter with the Marines. Upon seeing just that one gateway opener, we do have a factory plopping down just around, what is this, the 3 minute 40 mark. So probe wandering up, it's not going to be able to, ooh, actually getting splatted before anything else. But I think he got eyes on that command center, knows that command center's up, and is now trying to track down that SCV, that SCV in the base, but already sees a second gateway, which suggests we're going, usually when you see this, it's like two gate robo observer. Um, sometimes you can push it into like three gate robo. But actually, June playing this upon seeing that, brought that Dragoon back and is playing a little bit thin on initial attack forces. He's starting to move out now that range is finished, and he's going to be able to go ahead and get that free damage on that bunker on the front, maybe for some SCV repair. But Siege Tank, or so second factory, plop down. Siege Tech is not going to be that far behind. Also Academy plopping down in the corner of the base. So we'll see where the game moves from here. Yeah, Dragoon's going to go ahead and harass that front door. One SCV out, waiting for that second SCV to join the fray. But this is just kind of, this is just cursory pressure, and it looks like Jayun wants to go two gate. So he's just going two gate uh, into expansion, and then he's just trying to grab a quick third to play more of a macro-oriented match. 
and at that stage, and I, I like this play overall. This is kind of like, I don't know, this is really textbook PVT here. Uh, going ahead and doing what damage you can on that bunker. I do like that he's kind of whole... So he's got some Dragoons in the background. I'm wondering if Jaehoon's actually going to show them. It looks like he is going to show a third Dragoon and a fourth Dragoon on the front. Sometimes what players will do is they'll actually keep those Dragoons back and kind of want to attempt a Siege Tank forward. Oh, Gypsy having some trouble. This SCV keeps wanting to go in the bunker rather than repairing it. That's got to be frustrating for him. That is the sort of thing that will put him on tilt on occasion. But we do have Siege Tech being researched. We already have a, a tank out. It's going to be able to Siege on the high ground momentarily, which should put an end to this harassment. And I'm wondering if Jayun's going to opt. It's going to kind of be back to Gypsy to see what kind of harassment he wants to do potentially off this. He does have double machine shop, but suggests he's just going to go uh, for the double vulture upgrade. It looks like he's got speed upgrading along that window. So there, Jayun going to back off. And here's the thing. Is he going to keep the Dragoons here or is he going to go ahead? Yeah, it looks like he's going to go ahead and back off. But with these three bases, with the three bases and vulture speed, moving up. He's a little bit light on Dragoons overall, and this is a lot of territory to cover to try to push back. He's still sitting on two gates, actually. He's get, he does have that robotics facility. He has that observer. Actually, he skipped the observatory off of it. He is getting a Citadel of a Dune, so maybe going to go for a Dark Templar drop. Never mind. There's the observatory. But pushing more towards uh, Templar tech off two gates, rather than grabbing a third and a fourth gate to follow. This is interesting. I have not seen... This, uh, this feels a little bit greedy, honestly, from what I'm seeing, because he's got enough of an economy. There's an additional gateway. He's got enough of an economy that he can kind of start pushing in and wants to basically expend that. We have a double Goliath being built to potentially deal with dropship play. But essentially what I think he's relying on is Gypsy to play a little bit more defensively. And then more or less, he's going to try to push tech really fast. And he's actually going three base Arbiter right off, right off the bat. And building the Stargate at his natural expansion, which I'm not sure if that was spotted or not. So playing a little bit of my... <laughs> playing a little bit... I want to call that almost cheesy, but it's it's like just building placement cheese, right? So he's hidden a lot of his tech in that bottom right corner, but I think these vultures should see it anyway. Creates a little bit of a delay. Maybe these Dragoons can push these vultures out. The vultures not quite able to get in the corner. Do see that observatory to the front. they got to be laughing about that. Marine actually... Or sorry, the mine exploding on two of those Dragoons. But I like the, also the defensive kind of posture. You just got four Dragoons. This is a very light defense force, but it looks like it is going to be sufficient to go ahead and push off what is there. That Shimmer being spotted and the Goliaths looking to track it down, just seeing that single Goliath on the high ground. Two, three additional factories being plopped down. Level one weapons from the armory moving up. And I'm wondering if Gypsy is just going to go ahead and fold back into grabbing a second armory and kind of playing the match from there. He's already camped out that third base to get a degree of map control. It looks like the Observer is going to go ahead and move out. And I like what Jayun does with this. He gets aggressive and goes goes ahead and keeps Gypsy in the dark. Gets rid of that mine. So now Gypsy doesn't know whether he's going for an attack, a follow-up, if he's going for a quick fourth, uh, something along those lines. It looks like Gypsy comparatively is planning some form of timing attack. He's building up these siege tanks. He's getting a lot of his vultures on the ground. I'm wondering if he's going to go for that level one weapons attack that I think it's around like the 10, 10, 30 or 11 minute mark somewhere around there. But Arbiter might already be in the field by the time that happens. I don't know that it's going to have enough in the field to provide a stasis. This observer actually sneaking through the Goliath trying to track it down, but it's going to get a good look at the factory count. The Goliaths are going to be there to deal with that Arbiter potentially. But now Gypsy, yeah, gathering up. It looks like he is going to move out. So what is the timing on this? Around the nine minute mark. So a little bit earlier than I was even expecting. Because I think Weapons 1 comes in around like 9, 30, 10 minutes. Anyway, so pushing out, bringing some SEVs along the line. Does Jayun have enough to fight this off? He does not have a massive amount of Dragoons. He actually did go for a fourth base. So that is a lot of minerals that were in expansions and not anything else. And this is basically Jayun's going to have to micro this perfectly to pull out of this. He does have a Dark Templar being built in backfield, but yeah, getting a little bit greedy in grabbing that fourth. It looks like he's trying to swing in some Dragoons from the south, but this is just so many siege tanks to try to defend this. He's immediately pulling the probes off, which I think is wise. I think he's, this is a nice decision making from Jamie. He's like, I can't defend this base anyway. So let me just move this Dark Templar in, see what I can get accomplished here. I don't see any science vessels up. So let me just expend some comsat. Maybe there's a initial comsat, but maybe if he can just keep moving out 
a few Dark Templar at a time. He also has a dropship moving up to try to provide him some defense. He's like, I am going to lose this Nexus, but I'm going to still maintain the overall economic advantage by grabbing three. These tanks remaining on siege and just pressing forward, looking at the number of Dragoons that are there. That this looks like the Zealot's able to get right on top of the siege tanks. Beautiful play, right as they're sieging. And the Dragoons on top of the siege tanks. Otherwise, it looks like Gypsy still has enough that he's pounding through this, trying to get a turret on the front door. But if that turret gets taken out and those SVs get taken out, I do believe that these Dark Templars should be able to clean things out. Otherwise, there's an Arbiter now in the field as well. An additional Comstat dropping, but is there enough scan to keep this up? And will it matter? That missile turret right there. Gypsy wants his front door seal. Only three siege tanks left. He gets the missile turret up. There's also mines in the front. And now Jayun almost defending this, but in a lot of trouble now. Vulture sneaking through. There's so much tech right here blocking everything in. The Vulture's still able to sneak right back out, but it looks like Gypsy does have a front door seal. And should be able to reinforce this. He's already working on that, still working on that third. A Dark Templar moving up. Looks like he's able to take out another siege tank, but and the Zealot's running it as well. More Comsat being dropped. I'm not sure that was a bit of a wasted Comsat, in my opinion. He did have the, the turret to do the range, but uh, perhaps an emergency reflex. But now Gypsy continuing to press this forward. More Dark Templar out on the field. I think still in turret range, however. Mind Drag not getting to the tanks. And now that natural expansion in a lot of trouble. Keep in mind, Jayun is still mining off three bases. He does have that three o'clock base, so he still has an economy to, to do something. However, it looks like Gypsy is getting more and more of a deathlock on this natural expansion. That Nexus continuing to lose health, trying to group up some more units in that shuttle. Maybe if he can get these Dragoons on the low ground, but more Siege Shanks just flooding forward. Flooding forward. And it looks like that Nexus is going to go down. So now it is two base versus two base with a front door seal. It looks like Gypsy has, in fact, done it. A siege tank finding that third base, just walking in. And that should be GG. Jayun still trying to hold this, pulling probes off the line, throwing zealots and everything else. But there's the GG. Nice play. So Jayun getting a little bit too greedy and trying to push tech and not having uh, enough units in the mid game. Gypsy finding the timing with the level one weapons upgrade and just pushing straight at Gypsy's front door, getting that front door seal, killing a third along the way. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Fun match. Thanks for listening.